farmer, uh, worked in urban agriculture, worked with local food for the last 15 years. This is a photo of That's led me on a pretty interesting journey because we now apply biotechnology tools uh, to introducing new crops in the region here in Memphis. And that's raised a huge sort of quandary and caused a bunch of different questions. A lot of you all know in uh, agriculture there's kind of two polarized camps, GMO, non-GMO. Both are perpetuating misinformation about the other ones, and both have unique tools that have to come together to solve some of our world's largest problems. Uh, we're entering or leaving an uh, economy, industrial economy, that's taken uh, fossil uh, fuels, fossil resources, also exploited labor, and we're entering a new economy, uh, the clean tech economy, that's harnessing solar energy into plants and converting that into a range of useful products. Uh, this is a challenge because we have to do food, we have to do plastic, we have to do fuels for a rising population. We have the sunlight to do this, but the sustainable underpinning the technology is not there yet, and that's why we need to look at these things holistically. Uh, the challenges are daunting. Uh, we have now 7 billion people that's growing. Um, a lot of those are under the poverty level on the other end of the spectrum. Uh, in the rich countries, we have obesity and diabetes and other issues dealing with overconsumption. We also have a society that continues to be totally reliant on fossil fuels. That's leading to increased geopolitical instability, uh, pollution, and a whole range of environmental problems that we see in the news every day. Uh, the good news, and we all kind of hear these terms, think global and act local. In this case, we really can actually do that. We have a unique uh, asset here in Memphis, the river, water, soil, good farmers, and a lot of captive markets that we can have a net positive impact on creating a lot of the uh, resources that we need. But unfortunately, we have two distinct problems that we have to work against here. One of those is our past. Uh, we have a hidden wound from the uh, association of using slavery and using people uh, in, in a negative way that we have to overcome in order to come back and, uh, and reach the earth that is our economic uh, development for the future. We also have pollution, which has been a huge problem. This is the dead zone down in the Gulf where we've taken fertilizer and un, uh, sustainable farming practices and uh, created uh, a lot of pollution and other uh, uh, problems. Thankfully, we do have tools from both systems. Organic, we're quite familiar with. The biotechnology, where we look at breeding and uh, modern technology and applying that to plants, that we can uh, overcome uh, some of these problems. Most of us are aware that tomatoes, corn, things like that we eat right now didn't come uh, to us this way. We started out with uh, uh, a native species many, many thousands of years ago, and through directed evolution, uh, humans have adapted that to, uh, to what we need. Now we have, in corn is a good example, incredible yield increases over these last hundred years. Unfortunately, if you look at the developing world, Sub-Saharan Africa, India, we're still at yields of back in the 1860s uh, in this country. That's a big part of the problem. And it's not just about yield, it's about a host of other benefits that we can have in plants. A great example is salt tolerance, where we can now grow plants in places that before you could not. That's going to then create a, a whole range of uh, new opportunities for people. Uh, a lot of the big complaints of biotechnology is that uh, it's all concentrated in the hands of a few small or large companies. Uh, as the cost of the technology goes down, just like in uh, electronics and other industries, um, biotechnology is beginning to be able to use in a lot of other types of applications. This is going to lead to many different plants that we can introduce into our region with local markets uh, and create uh, opportunities around that. Another big question that we have to deal with is scale. Uh, you saw that picture earlier with me in my garden. Uh, there's another picture of the same garden where we can do things on a small scale, but to really have an impact, we have to mechanize, we have to be able to operate on millions of acres, and that's a huge challenge. Uh, thankfully, uh, that can be done. You'll see in a moment a picture of one of my friend's farms from southern Ontario where we have industrial hemp, which you can't grow here, corn, <laughs> wheat, and, uh, and trees, all integrated into a large-scale agriculture system where you have diversity, soil health, and output. I'm going to leave you with two examples of how technology is used uh, in a, a, a new system that uh, borrows from organics. The first is BT. It's a naturally approved organic pesticide. It's now genetically engineered cotton, allowing us to reduce the amount of pesticides in the delta. The other is herbicide-tolerant soybeans, uh, which is allowing farmers not to have to till their soil, so you reduce erosion, you hold moisture in the soil, and you get this nice uh, ground cover like you would see in an organic system. 
Uh, now, this is kind of a big jump for us to make. We've got these two polarized. Uh, I came, uh, as I said at the beginning, from one side. So I appeal to uh, one of my heroes, George Washington Carver, who said, God gave us our farms and our forests in order to provide everything for human need. That's the vision that we need is looking uh, towards the future. Someone told my baby, let it just can't believe. Got me holding it tight.